Hello and welcome back or welcome to the channel. I'm Loudguns and today we're going to be taking a deep dive into base building in Star Citizen. This is a feature in development so just to be clear from the get go that none of what you're going to see in this video is in the game right now. It's a feature that like many of you I'm personally super excited for. And what I tend to find is that a lot of the info about stuff like this is really spread around in many different places. So the idea behind these deep dives is for me to try and bring as much of that together into one place as I can. Now I might sprinkle a few of my own opinions in towards the end. So if this sounds good to you, then grab a cup of tea while I roll the intro, then let's get into it. Just before I get into things, a quick apology from me that I've been a bit quiet recently. Within a couple of weeks at the end of the year, we've had our Org's birthday, my birthday, Christmas and New Year, which, since my wife's family is Ukrainian, is a much bigger deal than it used to be for me. I've also been getting a bit more into streaming, my schedule might be a bit erratic, but I'll be trying to stick to a Tuesday night for around 7.30pm UTC. So please do swing by if you get a chance, either here on YouTube or over on Twitch. Still, after a couple of weeks off, I wanted to take the time to make this deep dive that's been on my list since CitizenCon, so I had a lot more time on my hands to do the research and put together the script and all those other good things. Base building is one of the features that really sold me on SC as a concept. Before I made this my main game, I was very much a survival game junkie, with more hours than I care to admit in the likes of Ark, Last Oasis, Space Engineers and Satisfactory. The whole concept of base building is also inextricably linked with the future of the crafting systems in the game, which again scratches that survival itch for me. It's also essential to my mind to give Star Citizen a satisfying endgame. Whether you're intending to vie for control of a resource rich territory alongside your org mates, or just build yourself the perfect hidden space cabin, gathering or trading for the necessary blueprints and resources, and managing the longer term logistics of your base will provide a lot of purpose, as well as a cash sink that we desperately need. As anyone who has played and enjoyed any games with base building mechanics before will tell you, it's rare that a base is ever done so to speak. There's always improvements and upgrades to be made, and in some cases the lessons you learn along the way inspire you to up sticks and do it all again but better somewhere else. So my goal with this video is to break down all of the elements of base building in SC as they have been explained so far. If you know a lot of the info and are just after something specific, then please feel free to use the chapters to move around and focus in on something that particularly interests you. I'll also provide links to any and all sources I reference down in the video description, so please feel free to just check down there and go watch or read some of this stuff for yourselves. But I think a good place to start is with locations and land claims, understanding where CIG expect us to be able to build bases, and how we're going to go about claiming our spot in the verse. Land claim beacons will allow you to mark a spot as your own, so so far they've been sold as pledges in two varieties. We have lots which were advertised as 4km by 4km size, while estates are 8km by 8km. For a brief time these were available as standalone pledges, you can also get an estate beacon with the consolidated Outland Pioneer, which we'll look at under ships. However, as I will always say when it comes to Star Citizen, all you need to enjoy this game is just a $45 base package. You don't need to be going and buying anything like the Pioneer which costs hundreds of dollars. These will all be available to buy for UEC once we hit the live version. And when you find somewhere you want to claim, you'll have to place your land claim beacon down on it. And once inserted into the ground, a small memory module will be encoded with the precise coordinates. You'll then need to return that to a UEE Planetary Development Office to register your claim. Now assuming nobody beats you to the punch on that one, once registered, the land is now yours. Not all areas will require land claims, we'll look at this in just a minute, but assuming you're in one that does, there'll be no possibility for your ownership of said land to be stolen from you by other players. Players will be able to damage the beacon, but taking it out doesn't really do anything to erase your claim on the land. 
You'll probably want to replace your beacon though, since they do provide some rudimentary monitoring of things like weather and motion so you can detect other trespassers coming and vandalising your beacon. I think it is worth noting that there may have been some degree of change to the initial ideas around land claim beacons. Since this info initially came from the land claim license Q&A, whilst in Todd Pappy's Citizen Con segment he mentions that you can set the size of the claim, and from the picture that accompanied his slide it seems that the plot will be circular as opposed to square. Size appears to impact fees and taxation, so it may well be that the distinction between lots and estates still exists and determines the maximum size of the claim, but that players may choose to claim smaller areas within that range to moderate the costs associated with the land. Todd's segment at Sitcon also gave us a lot more colour in terms of the three different classifications of location where we'll be able to build. These are largely determined by the level of security of the system that you're in. High security areas will require a land claim beacon and will have a relatively high cost in terms of taxes and fees, while only offering a low financial return. So I'd interpret this as meaning you're unlikely to find areas to claim in these areas, with things like rich mineral deposits to exploit. However, they will also offer complete protection. Not only will the AI security forces help to defend your territory, but planetary shielding tech will mean that your buildings are invulnerable to damage. Nobody's going to come along and ruin what you built with their A2. Low security areas will again require a land claim beacon, but you'll find the complete protection offered by planetary shielding is gone. As per the notes on beacons, you won't be at risk of losing the land itself, but any buildings you have will be vulnerable to attack. NPCs should still show up to help defend, but I'd guess that they'll be slower to respond and might be in fewer numbers than in higher sec. And given our base can take damage, you'll want to think about adding to your own defences. The upside is that while you'll still be paying taxes, they'll be lower than in high sec, and the possible financial returns from the land will be higher. And then finally, we have lawless areas, or to borrow EVE Online terminology, nullsec. In these areas, you won't require any form of land claim, you're free to build without one, but just keep in mind that your base is going to be completely vulnerable, and there's nothing apart from you and your org mates to stop another player or org foundation wiping everything you've built. No AI cavalry is going to be coming to the rescue in these areas, so this is likely to be the end game for the more committed organisations who are willing to be self-sufficient and fight to defend their claim. The upside is the potential rewards on offer, with the highest financial returns and zero taxation or fees to eat into your profits. I made a base building deep dive a little while ago, and this is largely how I speculated that base building could work, so I'm really happy that CIG are thinking in the same way. I'm a big believer that Star Citizen should offer something to everyone, and accommodate a lot of different playstyles. You know, not everyone wants the super sweaty lifestyle of constantly protecting their home from raiders, or logging in to find a doorway neatly blown off its hinges and all their stuff gone. I'm particularly happy to see the high sec option with complete invulnerability. You know, a lot of the folks who commented on my first video were saying about how they just wanted to build themselves a nice little homestead with a cool view, maybe a little farming operation and hangars for their ships. I also think this invulnerability is going to lead to some amazing player-made settlements, where more of an RP focus can exist given builders can allow form to trump function. If you've played any hardcore PvP survival games on official servers, you'll know that one downside is that the Russian nesting doll strategy triumphs. Things don't need to be pretty, they just need to be really hard to break into. It's often impossible to build a base that's impossible to break, but with enough turrets and then walls within walls within walls, you're often aiming to force the attacker to run out of time or resources before they get to your loot. On the other hand though, I don't think that players building in safe spaces that they can never be competed out of, who are taking zero risk, should really have access to particularly high value land. I really like that CIG are coming at this in the design stage with a real risk reward based approach. I like that smaller groups or those who don't want to focus on PvP will have their space in the game, the ability to enjoy base building mechanics on their terms, I'm equally happy that those who want to get really well organised and are willing to sweat it out fighting to hold on to their territory will reap the rewards of this hard work. As I mentioned earlier, base building and crafting more generally are intrinsically linked, and indeed in most games which offer it, building is effectively just a subcategory of crafting mechanics. Blueprints are essentially recipes within SC, and they already exist within the game. 
While our list of craftables is a relatively small selection of stuff that you can make via the salvage ship processing units, every item in game already has a recipe or blueprint. They inform the basic economy that we have in place right now. So in an episode of Around the Verse on kiosks and commodities, Pete Mackey went into detail on how the recipes for certain manufactured goods dictate the commodities that are available to buy and sell at various locations around Stanton. Since SC doesn't really have a skill or level system, it's unlikely that recipes will be tied to character progression in the same way as they are in other games. Instead the team have outlined how blueprints will be acquired as rewards for missions, achieving certain reputation levels, and via rare shopkeepers. Interestingly, the image used on this slide shows concept art for a fabrication terminal, and if you'll forgive me a little bit of speculation based upon it, I'd highlight that the blueprint itself appears to be a physicalized item, a disc, that the operator is inserting into the machine, and this would indicate that blueprints could also be traded amongst players. One of the things I really like when thinking about the Star Citizen Endgame is the idea that you could focus very heavily on a small portion of the total gameplay available and look to specialize. So one player who really enjoys doing missions could acquire BPs, and then they could sell them on to a player who enjoys doing the building. And maybe even these trades could be for services as opposed to just money. Alternatively of course, you could be a jack of all trades, and the desire to progress in one area, like building your base, could drive you to seek out gameplay in other areas, running certain missions or exploring to find the rare shopkeepers to unlock the BPs. Each recipe will then require certain resources to complete, ranging from raw and refined commodities to complex manufactured parts. I think this is one of the reasons I get so excited about base building and crafting as a concept. Here, currently the economy is pretty stale. The only driver we have from an economic standpoint is to make credits, then we use these to sink into ships, components, armour etc to make more credits. Crafting and building provide incentives to gather resources outside of the constrictive meta of most at UEC per hour, and they'll create a source of demand for rare and bulk commodities alike. Like right now, there's zero incentive to mine iron or copper for example, and to most miners these mats are essentially no different to inert materials. But in the future, entire operations might be focused on gathering these as they obtain practical applications. Or you might even get some savvy traders looking to pick up the offcuts from miners who are just focusing on the higher value materials. Similarly, material quality will play a huge part in the equation. It was confirmed that stats and quality of items can be impacted by this, so it lends another objective for more industrial oriented players, seeking out the highest quality materials within a certain group, which can then be traded to crafters looking to manufacture the highest quality goods. In turn, the difference in component, weapon, armour, even ship quality could turn the tide of a battle between organisations, or allow a group to grind more challenging PvE content. This then has the potential to come full circle, with particular land sitting on high quality or high volumes of certain materials becoming sought after and worth fighting over. So something I missed covering properly in my last video on this subject was the building interface Rasta and one of the devs who worked on it actually reached out in the comments, so I won't be making that mistake again. I still apologise for that. Rastar is a tool currently used by the devs to place and design structures in the game, effectively allowing them to view the game from a top-down, more RTS-style camera view. The UI shown in the ISC episode is more developer mode, and it'll be getting a decent overhaul before it makes it into player hands. But it's worth noting that you'll be able to use this sort of perspective to plan out your build, since I've tended to play survival building games in a PvP rather than creative mode, I have to say that this is likely a godsend. It can be a real pain sometimes to be mid-build and then have to fly up to zoom out and check that you've got things aligned or looking right, and then find that you have to take half of your base down because it didn't quite work the way you intended. Todd added during Sitcon that the view will allow players to check underground resources which if we're looking to incorporate mining facilities into our bases will undoubtedly come in handy. He also mentioned that specific modes will help to map out power relays and other aspects of your resource network, which I'd take to mean things like oxygen and potentially conveyor systems if we've got things like refineries and fabricators. I particularly like the intention to have this planning layer, allowing you to sketch out what you want to build before committing resources to it. 
A lot of building work in other games which have this feature is done modularly. You'll rarely have the mats for a full build of everything you intend at the beginning. But it can really help if you can plan for things you intend to add later, saving you a lot of time knocking down walls and remodeling your entire base when you realize you didn't leave enough space for something you want to add. A feature I would love to see is the ability though to blueprint your own base designs. So if you have a standardized pattern that you really like, you can essentially copy and paste it to a new location if you're forced into moving. So what about the types of building that you can incorporate into your base? For me, we'd start from power, since without this you won't be able to run anything else. The team have outlined a few different options including geothermal, solar, fuel generators, windmills, fusion power and batteries. So I guess you get to choose how green you want to make your base. But also we've got a range of environments in SC, so you're going to have to pick a form of power generation which suits the planet or the moon that you're developing on. Then we have utility buildings which cover things like garages, freight elevators, landing pads and storefronts. Extractors meanwhile are all about getting the resources out of your land. These include things like mining lasers, drills and pumps and water extraction. One of the interesting statements from the devs is that they don't want anything to be fully automated, so a degree of player interaction is always going to be required to keep things running. Todd also talked about potential upgrade paths for your extractors to unlock and apply to them, and personally I just hope that this applies to a wider range of the buildings we've got. Producers covers things like fabricators, hydroponics, refineries and pharmaceutical labs. Buildings that will require the input of other resources, and then manufacture them into value-added products. And finally, we've got defences. Anti-air, anti-personnel, and shield generators. There were some hints at it during CitizenCon, but it would still require more confirmation before we can say for definite that we might get the whole Empire Strikes Back Assault on Hoth, Rock, Paper, Scissors type scenario, where shield generators provide a huge degree of protection against aerial assault, but are vulnerable to close ground attacks. This finally could provide a strong use case for ground vehicles, and alongside AA defences, reduce the total superiority of aerial assault. Since base building was properly announced in 2017, the planned structures have got a lot more intricate. If you want to check out some of the designs that the devs have modelled up, you can go and check out the CitizenCon 2951 Life in the Verse panel, or the Colonial Outpost work in progress in the subscriber vault if you've got access to it. They definitely seem to be restricting player freedom to some extent versus other games, which take a more block by block approach and allow players to get really creative. However, personally I prefer the approach they're taking with predetermined designs. While I've seen some fantastic builds in games like Space Engineers and Valheim, I've seen far far more boring cube houses. And for a game as immersive as SC, I think it could really make the game feel disjointed. The other upside is server performance. When each building block is its own entity, large bases can cause severe issues when you get close to them. More than once in Ark, I was shot down by a player's turret's defences before my PC had managed to render the giant base into view. Still, I'm glad that the suite of designs is getting expanded. I hope this continues to give people plenty of options to make their base still feel unique. Until recently, the only confirmed ship for construction has been the Consolidated Outland Pioneer, but thanks to the Sitcon update, we've got a much better picture of the other tools of the trade. Starting at the bottom, the Surveyor tool is essentially a small floating hover trolley that's capable of building small structures. All details of it haven't been released yet, but for size reference we can see it next to a Drake Mule in the white box mock-up. It'll be interesting to see given its name if this vehicle has got other applications with regard to surveying potential land claims and maybe determining what resources are present. For the next level we've got another ground vehicle which is as yet unnamed. It looks to be another variant of the Atlas platform from Anvil, the same family as the Ballista, Centurion and Spartan. This will be capable of building small and medium sized structures. The RSI Galaxy has been confirmed as the next link in the chain, with the ability to build up to large structures. So far we've seen modules for the Galaxy that cover cargo, medical and refining gameplay, so I'd expect that as the building mechanics get developed, we'll get the release of a construction module to sit alongside them. Then finally we've got the Consolidated Outland Pioneer. 
The capital class of the loop is essentially a mobile factory and should represent the pinnacle of building, able to manufacture all structures from small to XL. In his presentation, Todd also mentioned that they were exploring in-space options. Obviously, it remains to be seen exactly what they mean by this. I'm just going to say that if I could build an asteroid hideout, I would be a very happy man. The expansion of the vehicle list really helps flesh things out a bit more, and it's great to see smaller options that will undoubtedly be more suitable for smaller and medium-sized groups of players. Don't get me wrong, I love the whole concept of the Pioneer. As I mentioned in my Can You Crew It video, I've got some big reservations over the practicality of some of SC's large and capital-sized vessels for smaller groups and solo players. I'm also really happy to see the Galaxy get another application. Especially since if CIG are working to develop a module for construction, we might see this translate over to other modular ships like the Drake Caterpillar in time. I think potentially splitting out certain building sizes by ship class opens the door for some players to run construction-oriented organisations, offering the services of some of the more expensive, larger ships to players who might only need them for one build. Where you combine it with the ability for players to plan out bases, you might be able to sketch out exactly what you need and then bring a contractor in to actually put it down for you. Within our org, Frontier Consolidated, we're almost certainly going to develop a construction-oriented wing, offering services both internally and externally. So if this is the motivation you need to get out there and get involved with others, please don't hesitate to follow the link in the video description to sign up to our community discord. So I think that should be a fairly comprehensive summary of what we know about base building so far. The really big news out of Sitcom was that the devs are starting proper work on the mechanics from, well basically now, Q1 2024. So hopefully we'll see a steady flow of information going forward. Personally, I would just sound a little bit of caution, because I, like many people, get quite excited about this, but base building is always a mechanic that takes a lot of work to get right so I would expect it to take quite some time. But hopefully this is where the new preview channel PTU can be used, providing an environment outside of the current persistent universe and patch schedule to trial features just like this. I also do think that for the sake of balance, land claims and base building should take a quite a while to get into the PU proper. And maybe it should be a feature that only goes live after version 1. So in the land claim license Q&A, CIG addressed some concerns over players who cash owned land claims having an unfair advantage. The devs seemed quite sanguine about it, saying that the planned game environment's got billions of square kilometres, so it shouldn't arguably matter. However, I hope they revisit this opinion, because while all the survival games I've played are obviously far smaller in terms of landmass than SC, it's just undeniable that certain key areas will be significantly more valuable to control than others. I think it would be sensible to delay the release of land claims until everyone's had a bit of time to get their feet under the table so to speak, so that those looking to buy their beacon with in-game cash can compete on a level playing field with those who've pre-bought one for hard currency. With the potential value of owning certain land, a relatively small advantage like owning a beacon and a pioneer could just easily snowball. Plus I think it would be just a shame to cheat the wider player base out of the amazing gameplay that will surely accompany a true land rush in which everyone's able to participate. Obviously this might not be the most popular take with some pioneer owners, but generally I tend to come at SC thinking about what would make the best experience for the most people. So let me know what you think, what aspects of base building have got you the most interested, and what does your ideal base look like? Are you going to be sticking to high sec and building a luxurious little cabin for yourself, or are you going to be sweating it out in null sec for control of those high end resources? If you enjoyed the video and you think I've earned it, then I would always appreciate a like, subscribe, and a share with any friends you think might be interested. If you'd like to support my burrito habit, I do have a Patreon, but honestly, just by watching, you're already doing more than enough. So with all that said, I'd just like to say thank you for sticking around to the end, and I look forward to seeing you next time.